Good afternoon. I'd like to acknowledge the local custodians of the land in which we meet today and honour elders past, present and emerging. I'm Mill Wilkinson from the education team at the Hunter New England Central Coast Primary Health Network. Welcome today to a paperless COVID-19 clinic and an MBS update. We have the lovely Donna Block and Heidi Avery with us today, practice PCIOs from the PHN. Welcome ladies and thank you for being with us today. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, we will have a survey at the end of the session. We really value your feedback. Um, it's really important to us to utilise uh, further education and topics. So please um, complete that and thank you do that we'd really appreciate that uh this is also being recorded today and will be available in our education library to watch after the event as well in approximately 24 hours if you have any questions we encourage you to pop them into the question box um, and we will endeavor time allowing to get to those if we don't get to the questions we will um answer you by email uh, after the session I'll just run into the learning outcomes for today and they are how to reduce printing costs for your practice generating QR codes and how you can use them in your practice, latest information on the recent MBS updates. So thank you everyone for being with us today. Um, in these times, I wish, thank you all for being here and taking the time to be here as well, especially with all the lockdowns on the Central Coast and, and through the region. So appreciate your time and hope you're all going okay. So I'll now hand over to Donna. Thank you, Donna. Over to you. Okay. Thanks, Mel. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. To keep your COVID clinics paperless, we'd like you to consider how the patients book into your practice from the eligibility checker, as we'd like to see it free up your admin team when patients are directed to your website to book appointments as a first option or to your choice of appointment managing vendors that are available online. Most of you would already have this in place, but if you haven't, then now may be the time to consider these options as online appointment technology, technology allows patients to book their appointments through their internet connected devices. Online appointment systems may also come with additional features such as automatic SMS, email appointment reminders, online check-in processes for when the patient arrives for their appointments. Making appointments over the phone usually requires patients to phone during office hours only but this new technology allows patients to, to book appointments at their own convenience. Online appointment systems mean that the practice team spend less time on making phone bookings and managing appointments. And it also provides a buffer for your admin team by eliminating a few of those stressful phone calls and also some abuse. It'll free up your staff and allow them to focus on tasks that are more better suited to better health outcomes for patients. So starting with the arrival process, use the Service New South Wales QR code for the check-in. This should be displayed outside the practice or on the front door so patients can scan before entering. And of course, follow the current directives for New South Wales Health regarding the use of PPE for inside your practice. Also, follow your normal processes to complete health screening questions at that time too as well. Display QR codes accessing patient consent forms resources to avoid multiple printing. So as you can see, we're starting to develop a, a pattern here that will help you eliminate the paper in the practice. For GPs that want written consent still, consider eliminating just one consent form that can be wiped over after each contact or displayed on a wall or in a photo frame and only print one page for the signature to minimise the contact. But a far better option would be the verbal consent documented in the patient's record and you can use shortcuts, create shortcuts to do this. You right, Heidi? Yeah, I've yeah. just lost my screen, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. There you go. Okay, processes for a more efficient way to manage this in your practice. You are already using paperless systems in your practice. For example, you will have a clinical operation system such as your best practice or your MD or some of the other ones that we've all got. You've got e-prescribing now, you've got e-requesting as well. And of course, with this PHM, you have sent referrals. All designed for efficiency and to for the security of the patient information. 
But other paperless systems that the general practices can use for COVID vaccine clinics are, of course, the Australian Immunisation Register, the AIR, My Health Record, obtaining informed consent, and this is your verbal consent that we're referring to, QR codes linked to patient resources is another option, and of course, assigning the benefits to the GP during this COVID pandemic. Let's look at the last two a little closer. So of course, the first QR code you will need is from Services New South Wales. To do that, you register your, your practice as a COVID-19 safe business. This is required to be in place in all New South Wales businesses by the 12th of July, and this does definitely include general practices. If you have your smartphones with you, we'll give you a moment to use the camera, your camera to access the QR code that we've got displayed at the present time, and it will take you through to the regist registration page of Services New South Wales. Now we created this QR code ourselves just to test how easy it was to do, and it was it was it was easy. So just note too, for patients or visitors who do not have access to a smartphone, practices are encouraged to record their contact details and time of entry in digital form using a non-QR electronic device such as a computer. This record can be in the form of a spreadsheet or any other form of digital entry that can track patient check-ins and protect the privacy of your patients. This could be your appointment book. You timestamp the arrival of the patient and you also have it timestamped when the consult ends. And it's also secure in your software. You have a list of patients for each day, but remember you will still need to record any carers that attend the practice with the patient or visitors such as delivery drivers and all other types of people that visit the practice. Another idea could be to set up a visitor's column in your appointment book or even a separate appointment book to allow you to track these. So using QR codes to share information with your patients will ensure that you get to stay as paperless as possible. It's easy to do. If I can do it, anyone can. There are lots of QR code generators on the internet to choose from, but the one we used was a free one all we did was copy and paste the URL link where the red box is, hit create, and then use the snipping tool to capture the code. That way we didn't even download anything to the computer system. Just a note, please ensure that the QR code system that you decide on for your practice has data stored in Australia and not offshore, is following the Australian Privacy Principle Guidelines and that your practice is taking all possible steps to prevent cybercrime. Now, something else to know, websites also now have the ability to generate QR codes. To set this up, right click on the page, click on create QR code for the page and your QR code is generated and ready to download. It's literally two minutes. So what are we going to use these QR codes for? Just a few ideas. COVID-19 vaccination patient information, the correct use of face masks, hand hygiene, your practice policies as, as in an example, your privacy policy, you might like to QR code that for the patients. Your practice information sheet, remember they are, you're required to have that for accreditation, so that will fit, serve this purpose as well too. You could do health, Health promotion resources, think of your quality improvement activity. Maybe you'd like to create a QR code and link that for screening tools, cancer screening, OSRIS, family history. Or you could look, to, look link it to the practice website or your social media platforms. So why? Why do we want to go down this track? Well, one, we're going to reduce the cost for your practice. We're going to save you some time. You're not going to double handle things as much you're going to reduce the risk of infection transmission, and we want to take a bit of pressure off staff and increase staff wellbeing. So using online booking systems alleviates some of the abuse on staff, and it's less stress when systems are streamlined and easy to use. Paper, ink, faxing costs, 
the currency of the information we provide will be easily updated and you're not wasting so much pre-printed information that's frequently changing at this point in time. The benefit to the patient is the information is provided readily available for them on their devices once they download it. So to the last point, uh, signing the benefits to the GP. Now we all know for practices using Medicare Easy Claim, a patient assigns their right to Medicare benefit to a practitioner by pressing OK or Yes button on the FPOS terminal in the practice. You also have the option of email or using a third party who is responsible to sign on behalf of the patient. Until the 31st of December 2021, a practitioner can record the agreement for the assignment of a benefit in the patient's clinical record, then mark the box on the form that indicates a patient is unable to sign. The reason for the signature not being obtained can be given as COVID-19 or highly infectious pandemic or risk of COVID-19. I'm sure you're all across this. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Heidi now so you don't have to listen to me for a little bit. Heidi? Thanks, Donna. Welcome, everyone. As you're probably all aware, there have been some recent changes around the MBS. COVID-19 temporary MBS telehealth services have been extended now until the 31st of December 2021. From the 1st of July, two new item numbers were introduced. These are the 91890 and a 91891. So one is a short consultation lasting less than six minutes. So that's for straightforward care such as repeat prescriptions and diagnostic referrals. The longer telephone consultation item is uh, six minutes and over, and that's for more complex attendances. So these new item numbers replace the previous telehealth phone consultations. Longer tele uh, telephone item numbers for mental health treatment will continue to be available until the 31st of December to ensure timely access to essential med um, mental health services. The GP video items will continue to mirror the items for face-to-face -face services. New item numbers for bloodborne viruses and sexual or reproductive health services have also been created and exemptions were also introduced for patients um, accessing pregnancy counselling. The in-depth patient assessment for COVID-19 was introduced on the 18th of June to support GPs to provide in-depth clinical assessments for patients' individual health risks and benefits associated with receiving a COVID-19 vaccine. These services were originally introduced for patients over the age of 50, but from the 29th of June, the age restrictions were removed from items 10660 and 10661. So the service requires personal attendance by the general practitioner lasting more than 10 minutes. To provide an in-depth clinical advice on the individual risks and benefits associated with receiving a COVID-19 vaccine. These item numbers must be claimed with the COVID-19 vaccine suitability assessment, uh, the MBS item numbers, and also the GP must provide a detailed patient history and or a complex examination and management. And these oh. item numbers must be bulk billed. So I'm gonna go through a few examples with you now on when to use these item numbers. So this is patient one, we'll call him David. So the GP has completed the mandatory Commonwealth COVID-19 vaccination training. David attends for a consultation with the GP for a COVID-19 vaccine. The GP provides an in-depth clinical advice on the individual risks and benefits associated with receiving a COVID-19 vaccine, a detailed patient history and or a complex examination and management is attended. David receives the COVID-19 vaccine the consultation lasts more than 10 minutes and David is then bulk billed items 93624 and a 10660. So you are billing both item numbers together as, a, as the patient attended for the suitability assessment, has had an in-depth discussion where the GP took a detailed history and the consult lasted longer than 10 minutes. So one thing to keep in mind is that there is no item number for the actual COVID vaccine you are claiming the actual 
COVID-19 vaccine suitability assessment. Let's look at another example. So this time patient two, this is Mary. So the GP has completed the uh, COVID training. Uh, Mary attends for a consultation with the GP for the COVID vaccine. The GP provides an in-depth clinical advice on the individual risks and benefits associated with receiving the vaccine. A detailed patient history and or complex examination and management is attended. Mary doesn't receive a vaccine. The consultation lasts more than 10 minutes, but Mary is still bulk billed an item 93624 and a 10660. So even though Mary didn't receive her vaccine, you can still bulk bill the suitability assessment. And because the assessment was performed by the GP and the consult lasted longer than 10 minutes, then once again, you can bulk bill both items. So what happens once Mary has gone away to have a think about all the information the GP gave her, and now she's decided that she wants to go ahead and have the vaccine? So Mary returns for another consult. The GP provides the clinical advice on the individual risks and benefits again. A short history um, and or examination is attended. Mary receives the COVID vaccine. The consultation lasts more than 10 minutes, but this time Mary is only bulk billed for the item number 93624. So even though Mary was bulk billed for both item 93624 and the 10660 last visit, she can have another suitability assessment item number claimed, but, that, um, but not in the in-depth assessment, even though the consultation went for more than 10 minutes. So this is because you can only claim one in-depth um, assessment per patient. So we've uh, created this easy to follow flowchart that explains the patient pathways for receiving their COVID vaccine. It also, also shows you details of claiming the correct item numbers. So this is a flowchart based on the scenarios we just went through. If you'd like a copy of this flowchart, please get in touch with your primary care improvement officer and they'll be happy to send one out to you. Our next MBS update is the heart health assessment. So this assessment has been extended now until the 30th of June, 2023. The assessment requires a professional attendance by a GP lasting at least 20 minutes, and it's for patients 30 years of age and over. So really the only uh, thing that has changed with this item number is the age criteria has been lowered to the start uh, for patients from 30 years of age, but it doesn't have an end age. So it used to stop at 74, um, but it's just starting from 30 now. With the removal of many of the telehealth phone consultation item numbers, now is a good time to look at your video call options. Although many different video conference systems are available, the PHN supports the use of one video consultation system across all health services. The Commonwealth Government has provided funding for Health Direct Video Call. It's a comprehensive, secure and reliable video consulting service which follows the Australian Government's cybersecurity guidelines and safeguards privacy. If you would like more information on how Health Direct works, you can scan the QR code on your screen or you can contact your primary care improvement officer. If you'd like to register, you can also um, email telehealth at thephn.com.au with your practice details. So that brings us to the end of our presentation today. Um, there has been a lot of content and a lot to absorb uh, through this presentation. So you will receive a copy of these slides and the presentation has also been recorded. So please don't feel that you're alone through all of these changes and crazy times. Reach out, your primary care improvement officers are here to help you. Um, Mel, how are we going for time? Um, all good, it's 1.19 and we've had a few okay. questions that have come through, so I'll, I'll read them out for you ladies. So okay, the first sure. one is, uh, what QR code developer was referred to before as the attendee didn't actually catch that? 
Uh, we didn't actually provide that. Uh, there is plenty of options available on the, the web. Um, some of them have a cost attached to them and some of them have different requirements, but there are also lots of free options and we will leave that to you to decide which is best for your practice, keeping in mind the privacy and security questions. Great. The one Thanks, that John. we did use, Mel, um, it was just one, a free one that we Googled and it was one that we didn't actually have to download. So mm. um, always a bit cautious of downloading software that, that's free. Mm. Okay, thank you. And the next question, does a practice need to have a paper backup for patients without a smartphone tablet? Uh, in our presentation, we, we gave information on the requirement for an electronic record, a digital copy of that, and for it to be secure. The paper-based record, because they're referring everybody by the 12th of July to have the QR code in place for New South Wales Health, the alternative to that is supposed to be a digital copy. When you do register your practice as well, um, from what I've heard from other practices, they do send you a link with some resources as well. And one of those resources is there like a, um, a template that you can use to, to physically write patients' details on there as well in the interim, so. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one is, what level of attendance item payment does the greater than six minutes mirror? Sorry, I didn't catch that one, Mel. Okay, what level attendance item payment does the greater than six minutes mirror? Oh dear. Um, I think Do you want to take one on notes? A three yeah. and a level A and a level B. I can't remember the prices offhand and I can't yeah. quickly look them up. On no, that's okay. I've got you the presentation the there. So, yeah. yeah. Take that one and notice and we can one always. Was, um, one was $38, if I remember off the top of my head. No, I've had so many item numbers running through my head the last few days. Sorry. Well, fair enough. <laughs> um, take that one and notice and we can email that answer. Yeah, that absolutely. Later. Uh, the next one is, can a practice use a kiosk check-in from online vendor to check-in or are they not in use due to infection control? As long as you're still following infection control guidelines and spot cleaning and things like that, you can still use them. But yeah. um, I, you still need to register as a COVID safe practice and have your QR code on your front door. Okay, thank you. Uh, how, how does a patient get a paperless immunisation record? Um, so through their My Health record, so through um, their MyGov account, they can great. access that. Okay, great. Do you have to cite a patient's QR code login? Uh, good question. Businesses are required to ask patrons or patients in our example to check in and if citing that will give you comfort, then that's one way to ensure it. Because if someone comes knocking to check, you need to be able to say that everybody's done that. You come under okay. the same legislation in New South Wales and every other business is required to do that and general practice is not exempt. Okay, well, that's it. That seems to be all the questions covered. It was a really informative session and, and thank you both for being here today. We really appreciate your time and, and that was a great session. So thank you to everyone. Um, just a reminder that we have been recorded today and there is a copy available in the website and also please to complete the survey at the end of the session, which will pop up when I... So thank you, Donna. Thank you, Heidi. Um, and thank you to everyone. Everyone take care out there and um, stay safe. Good afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.